Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. A lot of news today. And then Clark Connors joining us in the final segment of the show. But first, this. Sports website Outlook, Outkick, reported Wednesday. Renee Young is leaving WWE. PW Insider, Dave Meltzer, myself, all confirmed this report. She gave notice a week ago. There is no date for when she is finishing up with the company, nor where she might be going, but she is expected to be working SummerSlam this weekend. 34-year-old Canadian signed in 2012 after working with what is now Sportsnet 360 on Right After Wrestling, a pro wrestling show with Mara Ranallo, Ardo Cal, and Jimmy Cordero. She's done a myriad of on-screen work in her eight years with the WWE, including commentating, backstage interviewing, host for studio shows like WWE Backstage, and various pre- and post-shows. She became the first woman to do commentary for an entire episode of Raw in 2018, a role she took on full-time until we moved to SmackDown as a special contributor, etc., etc. Married, obviously, to John Moxley, living in Vegas, writing a cookbook at the moment. So, Renee was the greatest, with the exception of commentary. It was incredible that they had somebody who was so good at a certain job... But then they decided, well, we've got to have a woman on commentary. And so we're going to move Renee Young away from a position that she excels at. And we're going to have her do commentary. And we're going to yell at her. And we're going to do whatever. And, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that she hated the job. And thankfully, finally, they got her off of that job. But it's just, it's another one of those... WWE things they do, and it's not just Renee Young, but it's all over the place. You know, they want they want a certain thing here. They want a certain thing there. They they put somebody that matches what they want in that position, but that's not the person's ideal role. You know, a, someone who's great on commentary, we've well, got to move them off commentary. Someone who's not good at commentary, we've got to move them on commentary because we want this, we want that. It's like... In, in an actual business, and actually this is not the case because, I mean, everybody I'm sure works here and there's a business like this, maybe the one you work for, but, you know, we, we got to put someone into this position, but they're not suited for the position, but we got to give them this promotion anyway, and they suck at it, and now everything's worse. Don't raise your hand, Mike. Oh, sorry. So anyway, she's gone, and... I want to add that I don't know if this is part of it, but, I mean, come on, everybody. This deal where she ended up with COVID and nobody called and they didn't want her to talk about it and they were angry at her and others for tweeting about it. It's like, dude, I mean, all I'll say is, I don't know if that's the entire reason. I'm sure probably the reason is she's got a really good offer somewhere else. I don't know that, but I would presume that. But, you know, my guess is that... Anybody who was a part of that coronavirus disaster, and there were like 38 people, I think, at last count. I mean, anybody involved with that that has an offer somewhere else, they're probably also getting out of there. It was a disaster. I don't think people, I I mean, some people understand, but you know, the diehards that want to defend everything. I don't think people understand what a complete disaster this coronavirus outbreak was for a thousand different reasons. So anyway... That's the story with Renee Young. I wish her all the best. I hope she shows up on, like, ESPN or whatever. I know everyone wants her to go to AEW, but, you know, if there's, like, a, a great spot at ESPN, I hope we see her there doing something. She's extraordinarily talented, and now she is free to do whatever she wants. Yeah, this is no offense to AEW because she would be a great backstage interviewer or a host to the show, and it's no offense to Alex Marvez or anybody else that's there, but she is great at what she does, and... Because of that, and because of her hockey fandom and her seeming like sports and her uh, charisma outside of the wrestling field and her attractiveness outside of the wrestling field, you know, sports is just screaming and calling for her. And I hope that an ESPN or a, a Rogers Sportsnet or whoever it is can grab their hooks into her and give her the opportunity to do more than just wrestling and just to take it back to something that you said about the whole 
you know, square peg in a round hole thing. Not only did they take her and put her in a position where she was seemingly uncomfortable and that she was not experienced or ready to be in whatsoever, then they have the forced interaction of the the forced banter between her and Corey that they have to have every announced team has got to be a protagonist and an antagonist and then just some goofball in the middle. And it's unfortunate that they they did that. But with that said, at least they knew that... That they made a mistake and finally finally they actually took her out of that and put her back to where she was actually best suited and best for the program now this is going all the way back to 2001 but do you know that jonathan coachman debuted in wwe in like 2001 and he was a backstage interview guy now for some of you that are too young to remember that period maybe you just started watching wrestling and i don't know whatever five ten years ago he saw Coachman on commentary. He was absolutely god awful. Okay, he was so good as a backstage interviewer for WWE. He was so good at that job. You know who else was actually really good at the job of backstage interviewer was Michael Cole. Yeah. But again, they decided that Jim Ross is too old. He needs to be replaced. Let's take this backstage interview guy who, you know, he actually worked, he was a legitimate journalist. I think he was in, he was doing uh, correspondence for the Gulf War. Let's throw him on commentary to, to call wrestling matches. And, like, he's, he's never, he's never been as good as the best guys. And Coach was excellent at his job backstage, but that was another one. Well, we need this guy to do commentary. Now, granted, like, later on, you've got, like, Nigel McGinnis. You've got all these guys that actually could be great at commentary, but we got to have Coach out there to be doing commentary. They do this all the time. Everybody, it's more important for them to have whatever they want on television than to actually put people in slots where they're actually the best at doing that job. Hey, look, granted, they he played into it uh, to the nth degree and, and still continues to, but like... At his time away from WWE, Jonathan Coachman was teamed up with, I think it was Freddie Coleman on ESPN Radio, and was great i mean he was great all of those things that made him a good a good sports personality and a good host and somebody who was actually in demand by other places like the golf network and i know he had the deal got the deal with madden to do i mean like all of those things that make you attractive outside wwe are the things that they will try to pull you away from or bring out a worse side of you to offset that stuff and they did that with jonathan coachman because everybody's got to be the worst type of personality and again the announcers and this goes to something that we talked about yesterday with like tom phillips nobody's got any credibility referees don't have any credibility in new japan uh they they occasionally have it in aew no announcer has got any credibility at all in, in in WWE, and it's just it's painful. And they have to turn everybody into this goofball cartoon character because Vince McMahon's got his hand shoved up their rear end when they're out there doing shows, and he gets off on it, and he thinks it's amusing to have them all kind of snipe at each other or come across as morons. 